My name is Steve Pruitt. I'm with Transwater Incorporated. I'm the Director of Business Development. Thank you very much for joining us here on The Crude Life. As we many of us know, water is probably not only the most important thing on the planet, but kind of that secret most important thing of when it comes to fracking and, and energy development. So uh, I'll let you go ahead and give your company a plug and let people know, you know how important you guys are in the energy industry. Absolutely. You know, I was at a water conference recently and I heard someone make the statement that um, in a way we're kind of like the new alchemists. We're forming uh, oil out of water and sand. And uh, I thought that was an interesting take. It, the, the value of sand and water is, is part of the frack recipe. And as you know, uh, today's environment, hydraulic fracturing is where the majority of uh, new development is coming from and the water and sand player huge role in that and water water being the somewhat scarce resource that it is in the areas where some of the most prolific basins in the country are located it's kind of a unique dynamic um, to that end uh, water tr- the water business is becoming a very uh, instrumental part in, in keeping this uh, expanded development going Transwater was actually formed as a, as a water transfer business back in several years ago, I'd say six, seven years ago. And uh, during kind of one of the downturns, we kind of moved away from water transfer and kind of focused our attentions on the, the frack ponds that uh, are supplying water for these fracks. Uh, out in this part of the country, in the Permian and the Delaware, those 99% of those are man-made water bodies. Um, and uh, we started turning our attention to lining those pits, repairing liners. That led us into an environment where people were concerned about how much water did these actually hold. These frack pits change hands in acquisition. They are rehabbed uh, as uh, time and nature takes its course. They have to be rehabbed, relined, and so there becomes questions about how much water these frack pits hold. And so we developed a methodology after doing some research on measuring those frack pits when they're already full of water, utilizing a GPS and sonar-enabled uh, watercraft, a remote control uh, boat, and uh, we now have a couple of those boats and uh, are able to develop a very detailed survey report based on sonar data and tell them exactly how much water they can hold and give them a little bit of information about their pond that they may not have. It's so interesting. Get, yeah. I was going to say, it's interesting because, you know, as you were talking about some of the different things, I, one of my questions is innovation, and you kind of bled into it there. With that, that would be a new innovative way that the water industry is becoming very efficient for the oil and gas industry. Is that kind of a fair statement? Absolutely. You know, if you look at the cost of water, it's, it's an enormous part of the equation of what it costs to frack these wells. And so anything that we can do to help P&P companies that are developing new uh, and expanding their existing portfolio and, or drilling new wells, you know, we're anything we can do to help them save money and bring an ROI on uh, just making a few investments to save a tremendous amount of money, money on water, uh, not only is it the, the financial, fiscally responsible thing to do, but from an environment standpoint, you're just, you're not using water that you don't need. And so, you know, there's two ways of looking at that water situation is number one is do we have enough to complete this frack? And number two, do we, are we buying more than we really needed to begin with? And we can help solve both of those and bring a return on investment to what we do um, for both ends of that spectrum. Well, and the water to me is such a critical piece of this whole energy development because, you know, I, I'm thinking of uh, an example in the Bakken where the state officials forgot to carry the one or something like that. And now they need 20 times more water than they originally thought to frack out in the Bakken. Well, that's good news for the water people, but it's better news for the innovative water recycling people. Um, And that's kind of what I, I see the industry going is that the water industry, almost by sheer just force, is going to have to become very innovative, very efficient, because for one, the energy development's happening. But on the other side of things, you've mentioned the word scarcity a few times and that sort of thing. We're talking about water here. So um, how much of that goes into your guys' day-to-day conversations, I guess, because there's quite a social responsibility you guys have as well. 
Absolutely. That, that's a tremendous part of our day-to-day. In fact, I just left a meeting at a frac, uh, pond site where the discussion is all about reuse and recycling. Um, in fact, you I mentioned the scanning of the ponds, which we call our TransMap product. It's a, it's a survey scan. Uh, we also have a product called TransWatch, which is a ongoing remote monitoring look at how much water they have, what's the volume of the water that's available. And more recently, a product called TransWatch Water Lab that is actually using a sensor array to report back information about freshwater or produced water water chemistry data points. So as as the as you said, sheer necessity, the need to reuse and recycle water that is, you know, flow back water or produced water from producing wells. That water is being taken in, treated, put in back into ponds, blended with fresh water. And it's very critical in, in the engineering these fracks that they understand the nature of the water that they're dealing with. And you know, before now, that was a process of almost on a daily basis or every other day or twice a week, going out and collecting samples, taking them to the lab, having them analyzed. And you know, unfortunately, by the time that data is collected and analyzed, reports almost out of date and so we are deploying uh, a mechanism to develop real-time data and on an hourly basis be able to take a look at some primary data points about the water chemistry in that pond and that becomes hypercritical when it's a reuse recycle with the equation which I moments before we talked I posted an article about you know it's not a matter of how many uh, drilling programs are going to be using Frack, recycled frack water, it's how much of it's going to be recycled frack water, right? And so it, it is going to happen, in, you know, in, in a real wide way. So. so a lot of this technology, you know, 10 years ago was considered a science project and it wasn't, you know, there was some resistance, let's put it that way. You know, we've got a decade under our belt now. Some companies are starting to see the savings and I find it comical because uh, for for some companies, they can go a year or two without a sale. And then all of a sudden, just the next day, they get 100,000 orders or something like that. How's the, uh, it's a very long way to ask the question, how's the technology acceptance been and the integration um, been in your guys' world? How, how How's it been over the last, you know, five, 10 years? Well, it's, it's been interesting, you know, this, this particular part of our business has been something that's grown out of the last three years of work, um, three years for the for the sonar survey scan part of the business, and really the last year, year and a half for the water monitoring business. And what we're seeing in that short amount of time is a conversation shifting from this would be something that might be nice to have to something that's like, okay, when do we implement it, right? Because one of the things that we're having the most conversations about is this isn't a replacement for people resources. This is a, a way to do something that they do not have people resources to do. You know, there's a scarcity of employees uh, available. Um, you have training issues where about the time you have someone trained to understand what they need to be doing with this water, they're onto another project, you know, another company, you know, that, that constant allure of making that move. And so we, we're able to get a lot of conversations going simply on the fact that this is going to not replace someone, but it's going to help them not have to hire someone to do this job. And so having a critical uh, real-time analysis or critical water assets, whether it be the guy in the field responsible for it, the guy in the, uh, the local office, the engineer that's that overseeing it, or the guys at the corporate office, these water questions are percolating to the very top of the business and um, is definitely something that it's uh, an advantage to have that readily available. And I think you're going to see more and more people realize they can't do without it. Looking at your website, uh, oh, by the way, we've got uh, Steve Pruitt, Transwater, on the line with us here. I'm uh, transwaterenergy.com is where I'm looking at right now as we're speaking at our services page, which would be their services. But I'm chuckling because, you know, I'm a fisherman, so, of course, I'm looking at your uh, depth finder you guys have on your trans mac frack pit mapping and survey. And, and, you know, that's kind of... Once I saw that, I, I instantly saw how you could use this technology and integrate it in with some other software or some other analytics. I can really see how logistically you guys can really 
maximize the savings when it comes to using the right different uh, chemistry sets. Is that, I mean, it's it's kind of a long-winded way, way of uh, of saying it, but is that kind of how it works? Is that this, this um, technology and um, just whole mechanism that you guys have really brings it down to not the atom, maybe it does down to the atom, but it brings it down to the most efficient way to get things done through a remote uh, monitoring to a real-time integration. Is that kind of what, what I'm hearing? Absolutely. You know, one of the things that we've learned, you know, SCADA and remote monitoring, and there's been a lot of systems for a long time in the energy industry, but they've all really been oriented toward the, the production side of the business and the midstream side of the business. And those assets are very um, stable and long, and they're there for a long time. And so you end up having these very complex, robust systems that are, in many instances are very you know, highly engineered, if not over-engineered, for what they're doing. And so uh, a lot of times on our side of the business, so the drilling completions where you're monitoring this water, they there's not time to configure these systems that are overly complex. So we've taken a very less is more approach, a very small footprint, even portable system that can be moved from location to location that is uh, taking advantage of giving them volumetric data, like we talked about chemistry data points about the conditions of the water. And these these are types of solutions that can, you call me today, I can deploy them tomorrow and have you data, you know, that afternoon. Uh, you're going to be lucky to get it, a, a, you know, on the schedule for someone to tell you how long it's going to take to integrate a system in a, in a traditional SCADA environment. Uh, we're, we're talking on, on like the Verizon network, uh, not the, in 99% of our applications, otherwise it might be satellite data. That's you know, so we can go anywhere and start deploying uh, equipment and giving you data within a 24-hour period, and uh, you're off and running. So it's very we're very able to move very quickly and give you very accurate information in a short amount of time. So who exactly would be your customer? I mean, the oil and gas industry is pretty specific, but it's also sure. diverse. And, um, you know, if, if you get into the ag world, too, feel free to, you know, mention that. We have more than just oil and gas people who listen to our program. So Sure. So for the time being, our, our focus has been in the energy uh, oil and gas sector, although we have had some conversation with some folks um, outside um, in some municipal water equations, um, agricultural water uh, type applications, but the interesting thing is is the uh, the number of types of customers we have, even in the energy industry, is kind of interesting. Obviously, it's your operators, the companies, the EMP companies that are drilling and developing uh, these energy platforms. You know, we they are our primary customer, but we also are working with a lot of water providers, people that you know, a whole other industry has come up where it's people that are sourcing and provisioning water um, where these oil and gas companies just don't have the infrastructure in place for the, the right away management and the water, getting the water to where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, the logistics side of the water equation. So some of those companies that service that part of the business can be our customers. Um, some of the service companies that build infrastructure, more permanent infrastructure for moving water, called the water midstream businesses can be our customers. So we're really coming at it that's customers on the service side as well as on the product, you know, the drilling and, and EMP side. So as we're kind of wi- winding down here a little bit, I'd like to give guests the final thought, the final um, word, if you will. And is if there's anything we forgot to mention, anything you want to reiterate or whatever direction you kind of want to take the conversation, that way the question is not framed sure. by me. So go ahead. The floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. You know, when you look at what we do, we're taking a snapshot picture of a point in time with our transmap services with not only our sonar scan boats, but we've just recently introduced uh, the ability to scan empty pits, either brand new or rehab pits with aerial drones with 3D imaging, some very high-tech military-grade type technology that develops 3D models of these frack pits that are measurable within centimeters of an inch. Uh, and then that's that point in time snapshot. And then the ongoing picture of the day-to-day, uh, moment-by-moment evolving conditions of the water is managed by our TransWatch platform. It's a very affordable and scalable solution. It's rapidly deployable. Both of those can be looked at uh, on a landing page with some introductory videos called TransWater Inc. 
uh, intranswaterinc.com. We'll give you a very quick three-minute overview of each product, give you an idea of what we do, and we appreciate the chance to tell you about that today.